Hey guys, today we got a pretty interesting video of a low temperature Stirling engine. So I'm pretty excited to see how this thing works. So in this video, we're gonna unbox it, take a closer look at it, and also run it. All right, so let's get started. guys so this is a pretty interesting little toy here but let's go ahead and take off the plastic off of this one so this is how it comes and I got this one on Amazon and they're not very expensive for what they are and this one's made by a company called Juno Star they seem to have pretty good reviews and quality product here so so the box is not too big you guys can see it's actually on the smaller side let's go ahead and see what it says here about the engine so we got minimal assembly easy to operate an elegant machine science art combo and fun to watch so you guys can see this is for ages 8 plus so you know this could be quite interesting for a pretty wide range of children and adults so here has some information about the operation and maintenance on the back we have a little history of the sterling engine and its inventor and how it works a little quick instructions here on how to operate it which is very simple you just need a cup of hot water yeah and that's pretty much it so let's go ahead and open it up so it looks like they have more products and different kinds of sterling engines all right so we got some documentation here so this is a user manual explaining how to use it so yeah if you need to maintenance it or you know put it apart or together you've got this little manual here and the other one looks like just product lines of other items that they offer Looks like they do have pretty nice little tops there too so all right so let's see what we got here so I can see some sticking out right here so we do have nice soft foam okay and so the engine does come in pieces so we've got the wheel here all by itself and it's quite heavy actually and we can kind of see the crankshaft i guess sort of type of design here on the flywheel connected to it so the craftsmanship does look pretty nice so let's see more foam and we'll go ahead and pull out the whole engine and there's more foam underneath all right so yeah the engine itself is sandwiched between a lot of foam pieces and this is what it looks like it's actually a bit smaller than i thought it was going to be so unlike the hot air sterling engine this one we have to assemble or at least just the flywheel here so this should be pretty simple and quite intuitive we just have these pistons here and they have to connect to the crankshaft and the crankshaft has sharp edges on both ends that kind of go into the brackets here that hold it so let's go ahead and put that in there so you just spread these two apart a bit and it goes in and it grabs it and it doesn't move around. All right, well, that's an interesting way of uh, <laughs> connecting this kind of wheel, but it seems to spin very well. Look at that. It doesn't even have much resistance like you would think. Wow, that's an interesting design there. All right, so now we just need to connect two of our pistons and they're going to connect to the inner part there. I don't know, hopefully you guys can see, but not to the main shaft here, but the other small one. I don't know what you call that connecting rod. It should just clip right on. Sure enough, it does. So you just push it on there. So press clips over. Same thing on this side. And just like that. All right. So everything seems to be connected and moving and working. We can see the bottom piece here moving up and down as we spin it. Very interesting. So let's take a closer look at how it's designed. So we got a metal plate on the bottom and it's like a mirror finish. We got a glass, it feels like glass, clear window here all the way around. And we can see that big spongy plunger or whatever that thing is on the bottom there that goes up and down. So little bolts all around connecting the two pieces, sandwiching it all together. The top plate is also the same kind of mirror finish metal. These two arms are welded to it, looks like. And here we have the small piston that goes down to that big plunger or whatever you call it. And then we have the other one here, which this one here is made out of glass, both pieces. And it also goes up and down accordingly. 
So I think the way this thing works is the bottom is heated and causes pressure for the big valve there to go up, which it expands into this area here. And then the cold area here causes it to go back down <laughs> somehow. So that's a terrible explanation of how it works, but something like that thermal dynamic heat exchange of some sort. But yeah, this is a Sterling engine, very peculiar kind of engine that's pretty old and never really was adopted into the modern era, but quite a fascinating and unique little toy. So I think for the next part, we need to get some hot water maybe in a cup and then we'll set this thing over it and we'll see if we can start it up and get it to run. All right guys, so instead of a cup, I'm using kind of like a little bowl here that's made out of glass so we can see the water and I got boiling water. So let's go ahead and pour that in there. And so I think all we got to do now is just set the engine on top of that. It seems to fit pretty good here. And we should be able to just spin this up and it should start running. So let's go ahead and try. I'm not sure which direction. It... Okay, so it's this way. There it goes. So I just gave it a little push and there it goes. Wow, that's pretty amazing. That didn't take much effort at all. And it seems to be speeding up faster and faster here with the... Uh, Water being, I guess, at boiling temperature, it's quite hot. And it seems to be definitely, you know, liking that. So so this is not going to hit any, you know, really fast speed. It's kind of like a low RPM engine. It is turning, and let's see if we can change the angle here a little bit so you guys can see maybe the piston on this side. So the rod on that side lifts and lowers the bottom portion, the bottom part. And then on this side, we got this little glass piston here that goes up and down. So somehow in there, the hot air and the cold air from the top are exchanging and causing, you know, the motion to continue. But it's a really neat design and quite intriguing, especially this being a mechanical engine. So anybody, you know, that's into this kind of things will really enjoy this kind of engine here. Now I am noticing that it is slowing down and that's probably because the heat is starting to warm up the top and sure enough it is so it is going to slow down now one way to make this run even faster is you can put little cubes of ice or some something cold on top of here and that'll help it keep this upper portion cold while the bottom portion is hot but it should continue to run just at a lower rpm so i'm thinking that this could probably run for a long time i'm not sure how long but it's probably going to be 30 minutes maybe maybe more depending on you know how much hot water we have underneath it so let's go ahead and stop it and see if we can go the other way. No, it doesn't want to. Oh, look at that. It actually started on its own. I pushed it the wrong way. It didn't want to go that way. And then it pushed itself the right way. Look at that. It's like a self-start, basically. Well, I guess with a little bit of motion, it self-starts. Because it doesn't self-start on its own. Yeah, you got to give it just a little bit. Yep, there it goes. Wow, that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and pull this off of the uh, bull here and see how long it'll stay running. I'm guessing it's not going to be too long, but well, let's see. Yeah, it's slowing down pretty quick, so. Yeah. So yeah, just a few seconds here after. Mostly a lot of inertia here probably on this flywheel. Oh uh, yeah, it still tries to go though. Definitely not giving up. Look at it go. There we go. A couple more maybe, huh? Okay, that was it. Oh yeah. So yeah, it does take a little while to unwind, but it does stop eventually. Let's put it back on the hot water and it should quite immediately start back up. Let's see. I went the wrong way again, I guess. There we go. And there it goes. Now speaking about squeaking, uh, you can lubricate the moving parts. And the way you would do that is you'd grab a normal pencil because the pencil has graphite and you just kind of like, almost like draw on it, I guess, or shave the shavings of the pencil into the moving parts where, you know, there's friction. And that really helps lubricate everything and make it run a lot smoother. So yeah, overall seems to be like a really fun little engine. And I think, you know, if you know anybody that would enjoy something like this, this would be a pretty excellent gift. And also, you know, this shows how 
know, unique uh, older technology was back in the day and how people were thinking about, you know, engines and how they work and, you know, heat exchanges and things like that. So very, very cool little neat Sterling engine here. So this is the uh, low temperature engine. That's really simple to operate. You just need hot water and away it goes. So yeah, so it's pretty safe for just about everybody. Unlike the hot air Sterling engines, which require flames. So this is definitely more friendly for like a classroom kind of setting. So in any case, guys, well, hopefully you enjoyed this little quick view of the low temperature Sterling engine. If you want to check out the other Sterling engine I did, the hot air, that one's a little bit more interesting of the way it runs and how it operates. Check that out. And if you want to pick up this one for yourself, I'm going to have some links in the description. And if you like this video, then hit that like button. If you want to see more videos like this and other things I do on this channel, then stay tuned. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.